In this tutorial we're going to take a color photo and convert it to make a really dynamic black and white gritty photo. So on the website, go and get the image of the old man. I've got this up, I'm going to right click on it, choose copy image, go to Photoshop and hit command N to get a new one. And because I copied the image this time instead of just dragging it over, it will create a completely new file. So I don't have to really worry about am I going to save it or save as. I'll just save it and it'll be fine. So you would name this the assignment name. And then you don't have to change any of these because they're exactly the same as the picture we're copying in. It does that automatically. So go OK and hit Command V to paste. Now look in my layers. I actually don't need a white background layer on this. I'm going to merge him down and you do that by clicking on this top right little drop down and choosing merge down or hitting command E. The first thing we want to do is turn in black and white and with the layer adjustments the way you do that is with a gradient map which is this bottom right one. If you click on that it'll most likely show up looking really crazy and inverted so what we really need is this to be reversed and there is a little button underneath it called reverse so click that button. Okay, We will now add a curves layer so click on the curves adjustment layer. For this one what you'll do is first we want to anchor this line that's going down the middle and to do that you just click on it once and that'll create an anchor point. And then what I'll do is grab this top area and click and drag it down just a little bit. Or you know what I lied that one goes up just a little bit above that center line and then I'm going to do the same about halfway through this lower portion. Click and then drag down just a tiny bit. And then we will do a levels adjustment. So we are going to have several layers through here. Looking at my levels, I can start seeing some of the combing that happens when we begin using adjustment layers. And combing is when we get these empty spaces, but that's really okay because what it's doing is just taking that crowded information and spreading it out, which is what we wanted to do anyway. I can tell from my histogram I actually don't have any really dark black so I'm going to bring in my black point just a tiny bit and my white point I'm also going to bring in. Now remember what happens with your white point. If you bring it in too far things get really nasty looking. So when you're holding that in bring it in holding option and then you can see when those pixels, those little dots of white start up here that's when you need to let go. Okay, let's take a look at how that's progressing. So over here my layers, I can just easily turn these off and on to see what sort of difference is being made. So that's quite a difference right there. We're going to add just a couple more steps that will really make this pop though. Let me show you how to sharpen an image. If I zoom in by grabbing my zoom tool, and I don't like scrubby zoom so I've got it unclicked, I can just click and drag to see an area Oh, there we go. I had to also undo resize window to fit. Um, that's too close. Here's our close up and we can see the detail in his skin. What we're going to do is sharpen that so it even becomes more prominent. But again we don't want to do that to our original layer so we're going to take that layer and make a copy by dragging it down to the new layer image and this one we're going to name sharpen. To sharpen something there's several ways you can do it. We'll just use the most direct way and go to filter and choose sharpen and smart sharpen. So here in this dialog box we have some sliders. I'm going to move them both over to the far left so you can see what difference it makes because my preview box is checked I will actually see the difference happening out here as well as in here. So I'm going to crank radius or amount up quite a bit and radius is where it's really going to start showing. And again this is a, de uh, a te the technique that can go really too far. Let me show you too far first. That's way too far. Um, you definitely don't want a picture that looks like that. So. I'm going to scale that back 
quite a bit and same with the amount and then I can hit preview to see what it looked like and what it looks like now so this is still some pretty strong sharpening but I'm gonna leave it that way and see what happens and click OK now unlike these other layers where I could just double click on one to go back in and re-edit it if I want to do a new sharpen what I'll have to do to this one is just throw it away and make a new copy so to zoom away really quickly to fit it to the screen hold command and push zero so that is looking quite a bit sharper it's one of those things that you don't really notice it was needed until you do it and see before okay so our last layer we're going to add here at the top by clicking on the top layer that is currently there is going to be a dodge burn layer but instead of making a copy of the image we're going to make a layer that can just stay put so even if we have to replace this image down here the dodge and burn would stay in place so create a new layer by clicking this new layer button because this top one was active it automatically creates a layer right above there if that's not where your layer ended up that's okay just click and drag it up to the top and then double click on it and name it dodge burn to create a dodge burn layer there's a few steps that you're going to have to either write down or remember so first you go to edit and choose fill and change the use drop down which normally is on foreground color change it to 50 percent gray and make sure blending mode is normal opacity 100 percent and click OK which gives us a solid gray layer right that's not really what we want so what we're going to do is apply what's called a blend mode and a blend mode takes the layer on top and uses it to affect the way the layers beneath it look without actually changing the layers beneath it so click on this little drop down these are our blend modes and let's just choose overlay from that overlay will take the 50 percent and make it completely neutral so it looks like it's not even there on this gray though if we darken areas of that gray it will also darken areas of this man and if we lighten areas of that gray it will lighten so just like we were dodging and burning on a photo in fact we'll do it the exact same way I'm gonna grab my dodge tool which is O and use my little trick to make the brush quite a bit bigger by holding control option click and drag to the right and then click and drag up to get a fairly fuzzy brush or down to solidify it a little bit and just so you know the amount of red that's showing in there has to do with the percentage of opacity that this effect is going to be applied at and right now it's really low so let's crank it up just a little bit more so this first time we do something you can actually see what it does so remember with the dodge tool if you just click and drag it will lighten something and if you hold option it'll darken it so I'm just gonna click and drag up here in the guy's forehead and you can see that it's lightening it just as if I were using my dodge and burn tool down here so that really is way too much so I'm gonna hit command Z and undo that and lower the exposure a little bit so that it's not quite that harsh and then come back in and kind of selectively tap a couple little spots and I can change my size again by holding option control and dragging to the left or dragging to the right and what I'm gonna do is take my dodge tool and lighten the naturally light areas of his face a little bit more and darken the naturally dark shadow areas of his face just a little bit more and not all of them like right here inside of his eyelids that's almost so dark I might lighten it up but to do this little area I'm shrinking my brush down even more and if you feel like 19% is still too strong of that effect you can change that so on an object the part that is facing the light most directly is the brightest and then as it curves away it gets darker so to increase the contrast you make the brights brighter and the darks darker so I'm gonna hold down option and just click lightly down in a couple of these areas so that the dark is just popped a tiny bit more than it is and zooming back by hitting command minus 
and then holding spacebar to click and pan down, I can take a look at the bottom. So you're going to just find this is something I do in most of my photos. And it's probably a lame crutch to lean on, but it seems to work for me. I'm going to take my Dodge Burn tool and make it quite a bit bigger. Option Control, click drag. And maybe even increase my exposure a little bit. And then I'm going to darken these areas. So to darken with the Dodge tool, you hold Option, and that will burn. Oops, I grabbed my slider accidentally there. And anytime I want to see the whole thing again, I can grab my Zoom tool and click Fit Screen, or just hit Command-0 which you don't need your zoom tool for. Here's a good example of something I could fix. Because his hair comes up right here on the cheek, it almost makes an unnatural line. It looks like he's got a hard crease in his cheek. So I'm going to lighten that up just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to lighten up inside of where his eyes are just a little bit so we can see more of that. And then anytime you're working on portraits, the eyes are what people really pay attention to just because we're programmed to look into people's eyes. So it's kind of nice to go in and make those pop just a little bit more, but it's important not to make them pop too much. So here I've got my dodge tool. I'm not holding down option. I've made my brush small and I'm just going to click a couple of times down here on the bottom part of his iris where it would be a little lighter anyway because the light's coming in this way. And then again over here just a couple times, not a lot, and maybe even just once out in the whites of his eyes to pop those colors. Alrighty, let's zoom back and take a look at what that looked like before and after. So Command-0, turn off and turn on. Look at that. So the area of emphasis on this image is really the whole guy's face, but especially this area. And I feel like because we've lightened this up, darkened this down, the light areas really pull your eye more. And then naturally because we look into his eyes, we're going to take a look and see those. So I've got one more little adjustment I want to do. And um, just to remind you, if you want to do the click drag zoom like I do, you have to uncheck scrubby zoom and resize window to fit. And then you can do this and have it fill your whole screen immediately. So grabbing my dodge tool with the letter O and holding control option to shrink down, click and drag, I'm going to lighten up this tiny little rim just outside his eyes just a little bit. Alright, now I've clicked a whole bunch of times. So if I just do an undo redo, I'm not going to see much of a difference. What I really need to do is zoom back a little, command minus minus, grab my history panel and maybe scroll up a little bit to where I started working on the eyes. Okay, so that looks about where I started. So I can scroll up to there and then scroll back down and click on my last one to see the difference. So, and once I've done that, then I can hit command. Oh no, I can't. Okay. I was about to tell you a fib there. Um, you can do that a couple times to just see what the difference is. And to me, that's a difference I like, so I'm going to keep it. And I think I'm done. So what I would do is save this as a Photoshop document with its layers and that will be my working file that I would hang on to so if I ever needed to come back and change this again I could and then I would do a save as and change the file format to JPEG and make a copy that's all flat and ready to go to print. So that's a uh, how you can create an awesome Dodge Burn layer on its own and turn an image black and white as well as sharpen it up.